Hello everybody, my name is Mohanad Sadiq and today we'll be talking about bradycardia. So bradycardia is any rhythm with a ventricular rate of less than 60 beats per minute, meaning a pulse of less than 60 beats per minute. Now, some population studies and guidelines will use less than 50 beats per minute as the cutoff. But classically, in medical textbooks, 60 beats per minute is what's used. When somebody has a low pulse of less than 50 to 60 beats per minute, they may start developing symptoms. Now, whether they develop symptoms or not, it will depend on their general health, other comorbidities, and the actual heart rate. So somebody with a heart rate of 15 to 20 beats per minute is more likely to be symptomatic than somebody with a heart rate of 45 to 50 beats per minute. These symptoms include fatigue, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, or what we call presyncope, loss of consciousness, or what we call syncope, or potentially death. When we talk about bradycardia, there are two structures in the heart where bradycardia can be localized to as being the cause. The first is the sinoatrial node, the normal pacemaker of the heart where depolarization usually begins. Problems with the sinoatrial node can either be due to abnormal impulse formation or abnormal impulse conduction. The other structure is the AV node, which sits between the atria and the ventricles and is usually the only path of depolarization from the top chambers to the bottom chambers. Here at the AV node, the problem is usually an issue of impulse propagation. In this particular video, we'll be looking at sinoatrial node-related causes of bradycardia. There are multiple causes of bradycardia related to the sinus node. Sinus bradycardia, chronotropic incompetence, sinoatrial exit block, sinus pause or arrest, or tachybrady syndrome. Let's talk about sinus bradycardia first. Sinus bradycardia is defined as a rhythm originating from the sinus node with a normal P wave axis in leads 1 and 2, so P wave is positive in 1 and 2, with a rate of less than 60 beats per minute. In this particular ECG, we see that the P wave is positive in leads 1 and 2, so it's originating from the sinus node. There's a P wave before every QRS, there's a QRS after every P wave, so conduction is maintained. However, the rate of the P waves and the QRSs is 43 beats per minute, so this is sinus bradycardia. It is important to note that sinus bradycardia can be normal. For example, in athletes, due to significant endurance exercise, they may have a lower resting heart rate and may be in sinus bradycardia when they're resting. Other times, it is during resting state or during sleep. It is common for the heart rate to come down during sleep into the sinus bradycardia range. Sinus bradycardia can also be secondary to another disease process. For example, medications, hypothermia, or hypothyroidism. In these cases, treatment of sinus bradycardia mainly depends on treating the underlying disease process. However, in the absence of another cause, then we define it as primary sinus node dysfunction. Now, it's important to talk about the variants of sinus bradycardia. At times when the sinus node slows down and the person has a low sinus rate, other parts of the conduction system may take over. Usually, this is either a different focus within the atria or the AV node itself. When a different focus within the atria takes over, you'll see a P wave of a different morphology than a normal sinus P wave. For example, this is a case where the patient is bradycardic, but instead of, instead of seeing sinus bradycardia, we see an ectopic atrial escape rhythm. So another focus within the atria comes into play and starts leading atrial depolarization. And we know that it's a different focus than the normal sinoatrial node because you see that the P wave is flat in lead one and negative in lead two. So it must be coming from somewhere other than the normal sinoatrial node, which is in the top right of the heart, and you'd expect a normal P wave positive in lead one and lead two. Sometimes, instead of another part of the conduction system within the atrium taking over, the actual AV node will take over. And here you will get a regular escape without a preceding P wave. This is called a junctional escape rhythm. And here's an example of junctional escape rhythm, and you see the absence of P waves preceding the QRS complexes. Here's another example of a junctional escape rhythm, and you actually see the P wave overlapping or slightly after the QRS complex. And what's happening in this case is that the AV node leads the depolarization and there is conduction down the ventricles to generate a QRS and conduction up the atria, generating a negative P wave that's on time with the QRS complex. So the P wave and the QRS complex are generated at the same time because depolarization is initiated at the AV node. This is an interesting case where the patient has sinus bradycardia. The first beat we see is an ectopic atrial beat with an abnormal axis in lead two. The QRS following this beat may or may not be coming from that atrial depolarization. It could be coming from the junction. The next two beats, there is no P wave preceding the QRS complex and thus there are junctional escapes. 
And then as we see slowly, the sinus node starts coming in and taking over again. So in other words, sometimes you see an ectopic atrial escape rhythm, or sometimes you see a junctional escape rhythm. These are cases where there is pre-existing sinus bradycardia, but another focus has taken over the rhythm in the heart. So it's other ways in which sinus bradycardia can manifest itself. The next cause of sinus node related bradycardia is chronotropic incompetence. Chronotropic incompetence represents failure to achieve your target heart rate or a reasonable heart rate during exercise. Now this is difficult to judge. Studies usually use 80% of your maximal heart rate. The maximal heart rate is 220 minus the age, and then 80% of that is 0 0.8 times 220 minus age. However, it's not that simple. And depending on the patient's age, comorbidities, baseline level of exercise, whether they're athletes or not, there's an expected rise in heart rate compared to activity level. And this is judged clinically according to the heart rate, level of exertion, the symptoms of the patient, and the comorbidities. And each, each case is unique. So in cases where this is suspected, usually due to shortness of breath on exertion, a stress test can be performed and the results reviewed with the patient. And depending on the clinical status, the diagnosis can be made or not. The third sinus node related bradycardia is sinoatrial exit block. In this case, we see that there's periods of normal sinus rhythm. However, there's a dropped P wave and a dropped QRS generating a QRS to QRS interval that's exactly double the normal QRS interval. And if we place our calipers between two normal QRS complexes, there will be an exact match to the two beats where there's a skipped complex in the middle. And what's happening here is likely depolarization is taking place at the sinus node. However, due to scarring or fibrosis or whatever abnormal process, the signal is being blocked from exiting the sinus node. But the next signal following that will exit on time. And that's why the interval doubles. In these cases, you'll get doubling of the interval or sometimes tripling of the interval episodically. Now, this diagnosis can sometimes be very hard because depolarization within the sinus node cannot be seen on the ECG. You only see the P wave when the whole atrium depolarizes. So you don't know exactly what's happening in the sinus node. All you know is what happens to the atrium when it receives the signal from the sinus node. So if a patient does have sinoatrial exit block and they have two to one sinoatrial exit block, what you will effectively see on ECG is sinus bradycardia because you don't know that there is an exit block between each beat. And sometimes the only way to see this is if you monitor the patient and you see the transition from normal conduction to two to one exit block. And here's an example where the, on the top part of the screen, there's a normal rate of sinus node depolarization and a normal heart rate. But as you get to the middle, you see that some beats are being skipped at exactly double the interval of the normal beats. And then at the end, you see that now the effective rate is lower. So in this continuous rhythm strip, initial conduction is normal. In the middle, you start developing two to one sinoatrial exit block episodically. And in the end, it's constant sinoatrial exit block. However, if you were only to see the end, you would think it's sinus bradycardia because you don't know what's happening inside the sinus node. But the fact that it's blocking two to one in the middle every once in a while, it's clear that what's happening is the impulse is being blocked every once in a while, causing halving of the heart rate. The fourth sinus node related bradycardia is sinus pause or sinus arrest. This is an example of a sinus pause where you have normal sinus beats, but then there's a sudden pause before the rhythm resumes again. Now, you would say, why is this not sinoatrial exit block? Well, usually the pause is not a multiple of two or three times the normal sinus rate. Usually it's a random interval. And the usual definition of a sinus pause is a pause of more than three seconds. So as opposed to sinoatrial exit block, where the QRS to QRS interval that has the block within it is a multiple of normal QRS intervals, here the pause is not an exact multiple of the previous QRS intervals. And so it's a random pause. One thing to note, it is easy to mistake blocked PACs as sinus pauses on ECG. So if you have normal sinus rhythm, there's a P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, and then a pause, and then it resumes P wave, QRS. It's sometimes, sometimes we say there's a sinus pause, but we have to pay attention to what's happening in the T waves because sometimes it's not a sinus pause. Rather, there's a premature atrial beat hidden within the T wave 
that will depolarize the sinus node and cause it to pause. So rather than having pathology within or around the sinus node, there's actually an extra beat in there that's causing the perceived pause. And here's an example where we see pauses throughout the rhythm strip, but if we look at the intervals right before the pause, you see that the, the T wave looks a bit abnormal, especially in lead three. There's a negative deflection in the T wave that's actually an abnormal P wave that comes early, a premature atrial ectopic beat. This premature atrial ectopic beat depolarizes the sinus node, resets it so that the next sinus P wave comes in later, creating the perception of a sinus pause. And if you look at the T wave before that, you don't see that negative deflection in lead three. So you know that there is an abnormal T wave there. So we call those blocked premature atrial contractions. They're blocked because they come in very early and they come in early enough so that they don't conduct through the AV node to the ventricles. So they block in the AV node and they depolarize the sinus node, creating a pause. So blocked PACs can be tricky and can be mistaken for sinus pauses. So it's important to pay attention to the preceding T wave before the pause to see if there's any hidden P waves in there that can cause problems. The last sinus node related bradycardia is tachybrady syndrome. Tachybrady syndrome occurs in patients with tachyarrhythmia, so fast atrial rates, such as atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter, or whatever atrial arrhythmia that can happen. We'll talk about those in other lectures. But when they come out of these arrhythmias, their sinus rate is slow. Now, the reason they have these abnormal atrial arrhythmias and a slow sinus rate is likely fibrosis within the atrium. The atrium is abnormal, so the sinus node is slow and they also get arrhythmias within the atrium. But sometimes it's because they're placed on medications that would slow down the atrial arrhythmias, but would also cause the sinus node to become slow. This is an example where the patient keeps flipping between a fast atrial arrhythmia on the top left to a very slow sinus rate with significant pauses, and we call those post-conversion pauses. After they convert out of their atrial arrhythmia, there's a pause until the sinus node or the junctional rhythm comes in. That's called the post-conversion pause. These post-conversion pauses can be very symptomatic and can cause the patients to faint. The patient now has slow sinus rhythm until the atrial arrhythmia happens again. So it's a problem because if you put patients on a medication to slow down these atrial arrhythmias, you may worsen the sinus bradycardia between these episodes. And a lot of times, treating these episodes will involve a pacemaker to prevent the slow rhythms and allow you to use medications properly to prevent the fast rhythms. So tachybrady syndrome is flip-flopping between very fast atrial arrhythmias and sinus bradycardia, which may lead to symptoms both fast and slow. So in summary, Sinus node-related bradycardias include sinus bradycardia, which may be a normal finding in athletes and during resting states, coronotropic incompetence, which is an inability to mount an appropriate heart rate during exercise, sinoatrial exit block, sinus pauses or rest, and tachybrady syndrome. I hope that was useful. Thank you very much.